Michaela Vernava for Nesson.com, joined by John Campbell, sports analyst for Odd Shark. After another crazy weekend of March Madness, John, how are you doing this Monday morning? Hey, Michaela, I'm doing great. Thanks. Now, these four teams left. There's been a ton of upsets, a ton of craziness. March Madness has certainly lived up to its, na- to its name this year. Let's start out looking at the futures odds for these four teams left standing. Yeah, uh, North Carolina is is the favorite uh, at even money. So if you want to take them to win it all right now, you can still get them at even money, which which is uh, less than um, coming into this thing where they were they were about five to one. But um, that's where they are. Uh, Villanova second at plus two forty. So a little worse than three to one um, if you want to take them to win. They were looking at more like twelve to one coming into the tournament. Um, Oklahoma's at plus 350 uh, to win it all, and Syracuse is 11 to one right now. And how is those? How drastically have those changed since the beginning of before March Madness even started? Uh, well, with the exception of, of uh, North Carolina, they've all changed quite a bit. Um, North Carolina has been five to one for 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 a little while now, but going back and looking at, at throughout the year. Um, the best odds you, uh, the Tar Heels were were, were ten to one. Um, Villanova at one point you could have gotten them at thirty to one, so they're uh, a little worse than three to one now. That that's a big shift. Oklahoma was fifty to one at one point, so that would be a really nice payout if if they get through and you were lucky enough to take them then. And Syracuse is, is by far the biggest long shot to come into this thing. Uh, at one point, uh, the Westgate uh, Jake Jake Cornegy there tweeted out that they took four bets on Syracuse at, at 1,000 to 1 back in January. So um, that will be a huge <laughs> hit, and uh, the book will be cheering against them uh, this weekend. Those must be some diehard Hughes fans placing those bets, but best of luck to them. It will be a huge payout if they, if they can make it. And so speaking of that, when we look at the teams that are going to be squaring off with two, two seeds going head-to-head and then a 10 seed going up against the only one seed, left in this tournament which of these two games is harder to predict the outcome of well the the spread is two in the villanova oklahoma game and it's and it's nine and a half in the north carolina syracuse game so um it'll be um i'm a much tighter game on paper anyway, the Villanova-Oklahoma game, and that, that's a tougher one to call. It's a little more like a, a coin toss. But Syracuse has been uh, surprising people all along, and, and uh, you can't really rule them out. Um, they were eight-point underdogs in, in their last game and down by 15 points at one point. So um, you can't count this team out. Yeah, they on like you said, on paper, the matchup UNC against Syracuse is very obvious. But what we've seen from Syracuse, is somewhat different than what we see on paper. So what's your hunch as opposed to what we're seeing on paper for this game, your prediction? I think I think it, the at Syracuse time is up here. I just think uh, North Carolina's got got too much. I think they're going to do the things they need to do to to break down their their uh, full court press and um, and they've just got the speed and the athleticism to kind of get around uh, to get around um, their zone defense uh, as well. So I do like the favorite in this one. I, I I wish they weren't laying as many points. I wish North Carolina w- was a smaller favorite, but um, but I just think they're they're too good um, and they're an excellent rebounding team. I think they're doing too much. So um, I, I think they're going to win and, and cover um, uh, in that one. Oh, then Villanova versus Oklahoma. What are you thinking about this matchup? I've been loving Villanova all along. Uh, I, I took them to go to the finals in my bracket. I've been betting on them game to game, um, and I, I, I just love this team. I think they're going to go to the finals. Um, I think they should be favored by more in, in this game. I think um, I think people are finally starting to realize just how good this team is after they beat Kansas. Um, and they, they can win any way you want. I, uh, they can win inside. They can win with perimeter shooting. Uh, they're an incredible defensive team. So I just I, – I love this team. I won't be surprised at all if they win it all, and and, uh, I'm really big on them. Well, speaking of brackets, you're lucky that you still have some – a chance, it sounds like. I do not at all, not a single (laughs) team that I picked to 
for the final four has made it. I'm, I think, officially bracket busted. And I don't think I'm alone, given all the craziness that's gone on throughout this tournament. What do people have to have at this point to even have a shot at winning their office bracket? Well, as I said before, when we first started talking about it, it's um, the the upsets are are what people like to talk about most when the tournament first gets started. It started, and um, but what matters most is is who has the most Final Four teams in the end, and that's usually the people who are going to end up winning winning your your bracket pools. Um, so. Uh, it, it, if you have one of the um, one of the upset teams, you know um, the underdogs, Oklahoma or Syracuse, and and you have them going to the finals, you you probably need one of them to to go all the way if you have them to do that, because a lot of people w- will have North Carolina to win, and some will have uh, Villanova uh, in the final four. So that's what you need. You kind of need an underdog to help you out at this point. If if you're uh, if you're still in in the hunt and uh, you need something special to happen to to, uh, to win. Yeah, I'm a little jealous that I'm not. I I wish I was still hanging on, but I I think I've got nothing left. But now last week when we spoke before the Sweet 16, you kind of advised that anyone who had managed to make money on this tournament at that point should maybe consider sitting back and enjoying just as a fan instead of placing bets because of the parity and the unpredictability of the game. What do you think about that? At this point, if someone's already won money, do you think that they should take a chance and bet on these final four games? Um, it, not really. If you, if you've already won, unless there's something you love, um, for me, I still like Villanova. Um, but I also have futures on them going to the final, so I'm gonna use those to to hedge a little bit. And yeah, if if you made money the first weekend, like I did, I really pulled back and got a lot more selective about which games I was going to bet um, after that because. Um, it's it, the the odds just get so hard and so tight and crazy things happen. I mean, Syracuse came back from a 15 point deficit against the number one seed yesterday, and and uh, anybody who had Virginia in that game was probably pretty much already counting their money. Um, and uh, it's just so much unpredicted can happen. And and uh, if you look at the end of March Madness, anytime you can make money in this tournament, you, you've got to be happy with that because the odds are so tight. It's it's so popular. Um, and uh, it, it, most people can't do it. So um, if you're walking away with money from this one and you're already in a good spot, I would either bet really small and have some fun with it or just uh, sit back and be a fan. Now, what if you've already lost money, though? Do you think it's maybe worth it to try for this one? And compared to previous years, how tough is it betting on this Final Four? Yeah, I, th- I think it is a tough one. And um, if – if you've lost money and all kinds of things are happening that that you don't expect, I wouldn't just continue uh, forging ahead and and uh, trying to pull one out of a hat uh, to make it happen. But if you like some teams here, if there's some legit bets that that, that you like, um, pick your spots and and uh, that's what it's about. I mean, the toughest thing and one of the most important things I, I tell people when when you're betting is to maintain your confidence um, even when things aren't going well. So um, it, it, as long as you're not rolling the dice and crossing your fingers and you're staying confident and handicapping these games the right way and spending time on them, then, then yeah, keep going. And then I just want to dive a little bit deeper into both these matchups before we let you go. For each game, what statistics should people be really honed in on when they're placing their bets? Well, it's it's really based on uh, the matchup and and uh, the matchups themselves and and what's happening. You're you're looking for mismatches and, and key mismatches um, that way. Um, I, I love in in the NCAA, NCAA tournament. I love teams that can play good defense and shoot the three pointer. So um, those are two that I look at. But you've got North Carolina in in. Uh, their game against Syracuse. I mean, they're the they're um, the, the top 
two-point shooting team. They're the second-best rebounding team. Those are statistics that are, are pretty tough to ignore and um, ones that, that you want to look at. Um, with Villanova and Oklahoma, uh, Villanova is a much better free-throw shooting team there statistically. So um, with a spread like two points where it could be a, a really tight game, that's one that, that might matter. This one might come down to, to who can hit the most free throws. John, you've had great advice throughout this tournament. Are there any other tidbits you can leave us with heading into this Final Four? Um, I would say, you know, maybe look at the futures. And uh, if if you want to take a, a long shot there, you're getting better than plus money. So it might be better not to bet game to game. But um, but just to pick a team that, that might win it all, and, and you're probably going to get better odds than you will in the final if they if they end up getting through the final four. So um, so the, yeah, that would be my advice. And and if you've won money, probably sit back and uh, call it a win and, and just enjoy the games. All right, John Campbell, sports analyst for Odd Shark. I want to encourage everyone to head over to oddshark.com for all their sports betting advice. And John, thanks again. I'll look forward to talking with you again next Monday morning. Definitely. Thanks, Michaela. Thanks for having me.